The next order of business is how do you construct the Dirac Delta? So how to construct this function Delta T, which I would like to remind you is just a spike at zero. So an infinite spike at zero, such that the total area under it is one. And this is done in stages. So what you start with, and let me draw that first, is what's called a bump function. So a function that's zero outside minus one and one becomes positive on minus one comma one and in such a way that the area is one. So let me write that down. So start with any, with any continuous, that's fine. So continuous function f of t, that is, again, zero outside our interval. Outside, minus one, one, doesn't matter if it's open or closed. And then a positive on minus one comma one and such that the total integral minus infinity to infinity of f of t dt is one. And there are many choices of such functions. One of them is indicated in the notes. It's sort of like e of something x squared or e of something t squared and that would work. Yeah. And now very interestingly, thinking of f as sort of a loaf of bread, we want to bake with it. Okay. Here's what I mean. And by the way, it's very interesting because my partner and I were really into food and we were wondering, well, is there an intersection between math and gastronomy? This is precisely it. So it's like math astronomy. So again, here's what we want to do. So I would like, let's draw a picture first and then I'll explain. So we have our function, f, again, zero outside minus one, one, and then you know, positive inside this. And what we wanna do, we wanna make it narrower and spikier. So what we wanna consider now is precisely two f of two t which looks as follows. So again, think of f of t as a piece of dough or loaf of bread, and then we wanna make it narrower and spikier to f of t. Which you can see now, it's zero outside minus one half, one half, positive inside that interval. So given f, as in step one, one. Now consider, and there's a reason why we do that, two f of two t, then once again, then two f of two t, first of all, is zero, outside a smaller interval. So in this case, minus one half, one half, positive in or on, minus one half, one half. And more interestingly, what happens to this integral? Well, if you do this stretching, Hopefully you will not lose any dough. And in fact, this is what happens. So integral of minus infinity to infinity, two f of two d dt. Here you can just use a u sub. 
u equals 2t, and then du is precisely 2dt, which we're what we have here. So this becomes integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of u du, but the area is one. Okay. So again, what is happening here, we have this new function that is non-zero on a smaller set, right? but the area still stays the same. And of course, you may guess the next step. There is nothing special about that number two. So what we can now do, we can consider three f of three t, four f of four t, five f of five t, which you'll see in the picture now becomes again narrower and spikier. So once again, this may have been f of one, so like f of t, and then we have two f of two t, two f of two t, and then we can do three f of three t, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Which again, it becomes narrower and spikier. But the important thing is the integral is still the same. Spikier. Spikier. But the integrals are still one. equal. And of course, you may have guessed, what is the Dirac delta? Well, it's just the limit of all those functions. Step four. So now finally, we can define the Dirac delta. Delta t is just the limit as n goes to infinity of those functions and f of nt. nt. And f of nt. So we had 2f of 2t, 3f of 3t, 4f of 4t. And really think of it, if that limit bothers you, just think of of maybe 1,000 f of 1,000 t. So super narrow and super spiky. So picture-wise what this looks like. So again, super narrow, but super spiky. Maybe that. So uh, delta t. And then, well, we just need to check all those three properties. Well, do we have delta t equals zero, except for t equals zero? Yes, because the functions become narrower. Remember, it becomes non-zero on a smaller and smaller set. Do we have delta zero is infinity? Yes because the value at zero keeps increasing. And finally, do we have that the integral of delta t is one? Yes, because at each step, the integral was one. So the limit of the integrals is still one. Yeah. And now, we have constructed this. And in the next video, we'll see the most important properties of that.